All right, so in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to take an old course, and let's say this was an old Flash course, and I don't have the source file anymore. All I have is a published course. I don't have the original content, and I need to take this course that's in Flash that's no longer playing in my organization. I've got dozens or maybe hundreds of these, and I need to bring these into something that I can publish, make HTML5. So I'm going to show you an easy way to do that. Now it's not going to fix everything, but you know most e-learning courses are probably like 90, 95 percent text and images. So this will work perfectly for that. Where you do have custom interactions or quiz questions, those things you're probably still going to have to build, uh, but you won't have to build everything from scratch. So let's go ahead and do this. Uh, I've got my course here. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to need PowerPoint. I'm going to need Storyline. So I want to make sure that PowerPoint and Storyline are set up to the same uh, dimensions as my uh, course. So I want to make sure that I know what the aspect ratio is for the actual slide. Not the player and all this stuff here, but just the slide area. So this one I know is 16 by 9. If you're not quite sure what it is, uh, most likely it's going to be 4 by 3 or 16 by 9. But if you don't know what it is, you can just do a screen grab of the image and just do an aspect ratio calculator search on the internet and then just punch in those dimensions and it'll tell you. The main thing is you want to make sure the aspect ratio for the slides that you can capture are the same in PowerPoint and Storyline. So we know this is 16 by 9. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into PowerPoint and just go to the Design tab. And then you can set your slide size. You can see you have your default 16 by 9. You can also set a custom slide size if you have a different aspect ratio. We're going to go to Storyline. We're going to do the exact same thing. Design tab, Story Size, and then you can see uh, you can do 4 by 3 or 16 by 9. Storyline you need to change because right now it's 4 by 3. Um, so you want to make, or by default it's going to be 4 by 3. So make sure it's set to 69 or custom, whatever it is that it needs to be. So we know it's 16 by 9. I'm going to go back to my course. We're going to basically do a screen capture of this course. And we want to click through every single screen and so that we can capture it. Now quizzes, I would still go through the quizzes. Uh, just so you have that content captured, but most likely you're going to want to rebuild the quizzes. Uh, simple interactions like tabs interactions, uh, you could recreate those quickly from the screen captures. Uh, interactions like drag and drops and things that are a little bit more complex, you probably just need to rebuild those. So let's go ahead and do our screen captures. You'll want to look for things like this, right? So you can click on them or you can avoid that if you want to, but uh, wherever there's a clickable area or something where you need to expose some content, you want to do that as you're capturing. I like to use screen to GIF. So we're going to open that up to do our capture. A couple things about this. We go to record. Uh, let me set the window here. We're going to pull this up here. Now this I'm not going to record right now, but I'm going to hit accept. Uh, when you're doing your captures, you can set your frame rate. Uh, most of these screen capture tools will do like 10 to 15 frames per second. That means every second you're getting 10 or 15 frames or whatever it's set to. So that's going to be a lot of noise. Um, but you can set it to whatever you want to. I usually set it to 3 or 5. I'm going to set it to 5 here. Uh, just so in case I click too fast, I'm still going to capture the screens. I used to set it to 1, but then I found I was clicking too fast. All right, so we're going to actually reset this here. So what you want to do is make sure you capture as close to the edge of this as you can without getting a border. Uh, this looks good enough to me. I'm going to hit Accept. And we're going to go ahead and start recording. And now it's going to count down and it's going to start to go through the course. And basically at this point I'm just going to click the next button and keep going through the course. Wherever there's an interactive element, I want to uh, click through those. Now on this one, this is a good example. Uh, these have these mouse overs or click elements. Um, I'm going to move the mouse so I get a uh, solid area. And I'm going to move it to the solid area to trigger that. And the reason I do that is because if I capture the mouse, at least I can cover that up. I don't want to get it on an edge if I can avoid that. So we just do that here. And then uh, we're going to go to the next slide. So you're just going to go uh, through every single interaction and every single slide this way. I'm not going to make you wait for me to do that. So I'm going to pause this and go through this and then uh, we'll rejoin when I'm done. All right, so I click through the course. I'm done. 
And now let's go ahead and stop this. You can see it's about 400 frames. And so it's going to open up the screen to GIF tool. We have 400 frames. You can see I have a lot of duplicate frames here. I'm going to go through that. Now some of the duplicates are fine, right? Like when I go through the tabs interaction, uh, what I want to do is I want to have um, each one of these here, right? But you can see I've got a ton of duplicate frames, so we don't need all of that. The cool thing is I can just go up to Edit. I'm going to do Remove Duplicates. And you can see I have some options here, so it's going to analyze it. So in this case it's set to 90%. So it's going to um, remove the ones that are at least 90% similar. So if you want to um, tighten that up or make it you know, more flexible, you can change the number. We're just going to go with the default for this demo. Hit Apply. And then it's going to go through the process of analyzing the frame. So this should, you know, where I have about 20 frames like this, I'm going to end up with only one. I'm going to pause this again, and through the magic, we'll be back to uh, a processed file. All right, so that took about a minute or so to process, so not too long. But you can see now I've got one uh, image for each slide or each screen. Now some of these are not going to be perfect, right? You can see these have the mouse on here, and this is where I probably could have held on a little longer. Or when I process those, make sure that maybe I change that percentage so I'd have these. Because what I'm going to do is just delete the stuff I don't need that's extra here. So we're going to delete these. But uh, this is a good example of where you can play around with the capturing. Or set it to not capture the mouse. It just depends on what tool you're using. We're going to keep this all the way it is. You know, If you want to, you can go through here and get rid of the these are extra slides that have survey info and all that stuff. We don't need all that stuff. All right, so let's say this is our course. We're happy with it. It ended up being 30 slides or so. So now what we need to do is save these. So what we're going to do is let's click on an image, hit Control A, select all of the images. We're going to go to File, Save As. You're going to choose Images, Frames, and then we're just going to overwrite this. So we're going to save this old course B and we're going to hit save. And it's going to say we're going to save the 31 frames. Hit yes. And now we're done. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take those images and we're going to insert those into PowerPoint. And then uh, we could we could insert them one by one into Storyline, but let's say we had thousands of these. Um, if I insert them into PowerPoint, I can do a batch import that's really simple. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to come into PowerPoint got my PowerPoint slide. I'm just going to insert. I'm going to choose Albums and New Photo Album. And now I need to find the file on disk. And you can see here are all my images. I'm going to select them all. And I'm going to insert those. And it's going to insert them as an image, as an album. And we're going to put Fit to Slide. Hit Create. And it's going to create our album. So just that fast, it's created, right? So now what we need to do is get rid of this slide. And what you could do is um, start cleaning out these files if you want to. Uh, if everything's the way you want it to to be, uh, and then we're going to go ahead and save this and import it into PowerPoint. A couple of things you can play around with is if you want to make templates from these. So you could duplicate. Uh, these slides and then cover this stuff up and then you have your templates and, and whatnot from that. One thing you'll notice is see how you have the black border here? That's because it's fitting this, but it wasn't a perfect screen grab. So I've got this black background. Uh, one thing you could do is you could right click, uh, format the background of these slides here. Let me close all this junk out here. We're going to right click, format the background of the slide. And I'm going to do a color pick of this background. And you can see I already got rid of that. And I'm going to apply it to all. So now all of the slides have that same color background. OK, we're happy with this. We're going to save this. And then we're going to import it into Storyline. So let me go ahead and pause this. And I'll get Storyline set. OK, so now we're inside of Storyline. What we're going to do is go to Slides. And we're going to Import. And we're going to Import PowerPoint. We just need to find our file, which is right here. And I'm going to open that, and it's going to show us a preview of all the slides. Uh, this looks good. Uh, we're going to import this into a new scene. And now it brought all of those slides in here. At this point, if you didn't need to make any changes, 
you could just go up to here, publish your course, and you've got a published course. So if we preview the scene, for example, uh, we're going to have a published course. Now obviously when we bring it in from PowerPoint there's going to be some stuff we have to fix like there may be some automated triggers. But you can see uh, there's your course. right? It's not perfect um, but you've got all your content. It's an old course most likely. It doesn't need to be perfect. But this is an easy way uh, to clean that up. Now if you did bring it in from PowerPoint uh, you're going to have these uh, triggers here that automatically advance the slide. So you can fix that in PowerPoint so that it doesn't come in that way. Uh, but in this case you just have to delete the triggers on the slide. Which is fine because you're probably going to go slide by slide anyway just to make sure everything's set up the way it's supposed to be set up. So that's basically it. Hopefully that helps and it's something that you can use to quickly convert those old flash based courses and bring those into Storyline.